In this video, Christopher Davis will show how to run gravity constrained inversions using UBC GIF in Geoscience Analyst Pro Geophysics. So this is slated to be about 10 minutes long and I have about four inversions to do. Um, so the idea here is that, uh, that we, have, um, we have some information. So we have our, our DEM and a data mine model uh, surface. So here I'm just gonna drag and drop it in. Um, we have our gravity data uh, as a point set. And we have a model.csv.txt, so an ASCII-based uh, block model. And that's, the, that's what we're going to start with. And so that model has a, has a rock code that has been uh, prepared by someone, um, most likely a geologist, and it has been uh, imported and exported through some type of uh, geologic modeling software. So what we want to do is put this information into a, a UBC-based inversion. Um, so before I do that, though, um, what I really want is to do a blind inversion. So I don't want to put anything into the inversion yet, just to see, uh, just to see what we get. Um, so, so far everything's been uh, free and this is where the pro geophysics comes in. So I'm going to use uh, something called GIF tools, which helps us interface with uh, UBC uh, inversions. I'll tell it the type of data my points are and I'll bring in my model and I'm just going to invert straight on the model. To create a, an inversion, I'm just going to go inversion. Um, today I'm going to use uh, GZ3D, so gravity, uh, but this actually applies to uh, any type of, uh, of model or UBC code that, uh, that is available. We need to put the file somewhere, um, so I'll aptly name it inversion um, and probably forget where it is later. I'm going to edit options. So I need to set some, some very specific options here. Um, mostly um, it's gonna be my mesh, which is my model, my observed data, which is gravity, and my topography data. I'll do depth weighting. I'm gonna turn off the uh, wavelet parameters because uh, it's a pretty small model anyway. Um, I need to set my length scales at roughly 3,200 meters. That's about four cells, which is kind of a normal, a normal width uh, apart. And that's it. So because the, the data came in from the gravity data as a UBC gravity uh, data file, it already has a, a, an assigned uncertainty. So I'm good to go. So I can actually just write and apply file. I, I have the option and set things I can do. And I'm just gonna go ahead and run uh, the sensitivity um, and the inversion. While that's running, I'll just briefly show you. Um, I have the, uh, the metadata that this inversion's running down here. So I have the data I used, the executable name, the length scales, um, the reference model derivatives and, and everything else and the version and the working directory. So I can always click on these blue links to take me to either the object in the object tree or the actual working directory. So that has been run. Um, so let's go ahead and load the results and just look briefly at what the inversion uh, looks like. When I load the results, um, it again keeps my metadata. It makes a copy of everything I use for that inversion. So I can always copy the options and rerun it later on. It also grabs the .log file and the .out file. So I always have exactly what I did to create this model. If I simply look at the model, um, it looks like a, a blob, which is what we expect from, uh, from Grab3D. Uh, and yeah, so that's what it looks like. Um, we won't go too far because uh, into the, the data itself. Um, I'm supposed to keep this uh, pretty short, but we have the, the gravity data we used, the uncertainties that we used with the predicted data, uh, the misfit, and then the misfit normalized by the, uh, the error given. And you can see it actually does a decent job of, um, of doing it. We have some correlations, but uh, not too bad. 
So that's a blind inversion. Um, but really, we have this geologic information, and that's what we want to grab. So the next thing we'll do is we'll add our reference model. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and just copy the options. Um, and I'll throw it in the same inversion um, folder. And let me just rename this so I know what I was doing. So that's blind. And this is with a reference model. And so what I'll do is I'll right click inversion. Uh, now this is where if I want to reproduce the inversion I just had, I just simply write the files and run them. But in this case, uh, I'd like to add the, uh, the reference model. So I'll go to the inversion. I'll find the reference model object and I'll find this density prepared. So that's the density that was given to me by the, uh, the geologist. And, and then the role in the model objective function. So to, be, to begin with, uh, in the model objective function, which describes the model smoothing, we have an M minus M naught, which is where M naught is the reference model. So here it's gonna take the difference um, between the recovered and the, and the reference model into account. So I'll just apply and write files. Inversion, run. I could run just the inversion. I could also just rerun everything in this case. <clears throat> um, I could run just the inversion because all I've changed uh, is the actual uh, parameter. So I'm adding soft constraints at this point. And so this should take about one iteration. Um, and again, I'm using the, the reference model as this one minus M naught. Let's just take a quick look at that guy first. So this is the, the reference model uh, and you can see the data colors uh, here go from minus uh, 0 0.04 up to 0.26. Great, so the inversion's done. So what I'll do is I'll come here and I'll just load uh, the results. So just like with the first one, I'll get the, the data, uh, the topography, um, any predicted data with the misfits. Uh, I'll also have the recovered model and it's gonna give me the density prepared because that is the uh, model that I use for the reference model. Um, I'd like to put it on the same uh, data type to make sure that the color stretch is the same. So let me just do that quickly. Great. So this is what we get when we use the inversion uh, with the reference model uh, here, this density prepared inside the inversion. So really what it's trying to do is not uh, go away from this model, which is, which is in, in theory great, but uh, we really started to hit the edges of the model because this reference model was inside the spatial derivative. So inside the X, the Y, and the Z, not just the smallest model component. So now what we're going to do is we're going to expand this um, to take out the reference model in the, uh, the X, Y, Z and only do it in the WS. To do this, I'll just copy the option. And we're going to do the reference model and this is out of W, X, Y, Z. I can always throw in some more extra comments in here if I want to clarify why I was doing something or what I was doing. I'll edit the options. And here I have the smooth mod diff or smooth mod. So that's the difference here is the smooth mod uh, only has it um, putting it in the WS where smooth mod diff has M minus M naught in both the smallest models, the WS and the WXYZ. I apply and write files. And I run. So now I've, I've run three inversions, um, a blind, a reference model, and a model out of the, the W, X, Y, and Z. And while that's running, I'll go ahead and I'll prepare uh, to use more soft constraints, which would be the weighting functions. So what I'd like to do is create a, a weighting function um, 
between these rock codes down here. Um, to do that, I will select the rock code. I'll build a constraint and go to face weights. And here I'm gonna do it between the units. So what I can do is I can take out the reference model and rather than that, I can say anywhere where the inversion crosses a boundary, a geologic boundary, I can either say, make sure those two cells are similar or allow the, uh, a sharp contrast. And by allowing a sharp contrast, I would put something less than one, which is what I'll do here. And so now we have, uh, we have weights. And so when we look, we have cells and then we have faces. So if we wanted to just briefly look at these things, this is what they look like. Um, with this rock code, there we go. And so anywhere the rock code is changed, we have put a face down and made it less than one. It's done, so let's go ahead and load those results. And for sake of time, let's go ahead and copy those options. So here what I'll do is I'll do just face weights. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the reference model back to zero. Um, and I'll just simply add the face weight. So here's where we're gonna use the W, X, Y, Z. I'll apply and write files, hit okay. And run the inversion. And while I'm doing that, let's just take a peek at how this inversion did. So let's just go ahead and view only this guy. And let's change the type one more time to the prepared type. There we go. So you can see how that's changed. So rather than having the real sharp boundaries, because we have taken the reference model and we've gone to just WS, it tries to put a higher uh, density where we had a higher density with the reference model, but it allows it to smooth out a little bit more. And so that's really the difference that we're seeing uh, out of WXYZ and in, inside WXYZ. So for a long time, we had the reference model inside WXYZ. And so if you gave it a block, it would just give you the block back. But here we can really try to push the, the, the densities, susceptibilities, or connectivities towards a reference model, but allow it a bit to fit the data. Great. And so our final inversion's done. So let's bring the face weights in. So load results. And, I, and again, I have log files for all of these. So I know I'm flying through here, but, uh, but we can always go back in and look. And one of the reasons why I have the log uh, files and the model is so I can then uh, compare the two. So here we have GZ3D. Just need to reassign that. I'll do it to this type just so we can see what it looks like. So here we have soft, softer constraints. So the, the data type, so the color stretch is on the reference model, but I did not give it the reference model. And that's an important uh, aspect here. What I did do is I gave it the uh, gradient, this rock code gradients on the faces. And you can see where it starts to really try to put breaks inside uh, each specific model um, unit as it crosses those, those boundaries. And so there you go. That's been, uh, it's been 15 minutes. Um, and I, I've run uh, four inversions, giving soft constraints uh, rather than hard constraints like, uh, like upper and lower bounds and different ones. And of course I can go through and add face weights and reference models and really try to push the, the inversion in one area and not another uh, to be able to, uh, to invert with UBC. But it's a, a big step up from, from getting something that, uh, that has some geologic information back down to this blind inversion here.